Um, one of the ways I can tell that I am getting old, right, is that all the people that I used to listen to downstairs on the 150 watt stereo speaker where the speakers were this high with dual subwoofers and mid range and a tweeter on it, okay, that I was told if I could, they were told if I could basically stand up and lean on them without having to lean down. They were so loud we could listen to it in the basement. We'd turn it on in the basement. We'd listen to it all the way out through the house in the garage. There was a lot of square footage to be pumping volume, but we did. But now, when I, the, all the people that I listen to, the Eagles, Queen, Foreigner, Rush. Yeah, I hadn't named a Christian band yet, right? <laughs> no. But, uh, those people are uh, Sting, Sticks. I mean, it just goes on and on. Um, the Sting or Sticks. The, the reality is when you start thinking, no, I did not like name Merle or any of that, Lee, okay? Uh, maybe a little cash for me. But the people that I used to listen to, they're, they're announcing they're going on last tours or either they've already had them because they have died. <laughs> it's real. Jeff and I realized we were at the same concert a few years ago because we wanted to hear Foreigner. They got the guy out of the hospital, put him in a jumpsuit and let him play and sing for us. Okay? It was Don Felder, Styx, and Foreigner in Simpsonville. But you know what? I find myself, I, I want to go hear them. I, I want to see them again. I'm drawn. I'm trying to relive part of my youth. I want... Their voices are going. They do not move like they used to, that's for sure. You're lucky if you, they sing like it. But I want to go see them. I, I'm drawn to it. It's a part of that. I would do anything to be able to have seen Hank Aaron in his greatest days. He was getting old by the time he became my, greatest, my favorite player. You would love to go back and to see those things, wouldn't you? I don't know. For you, it might not be. You know, I know for Lee, he, he'd like to see Merle and Hank, okay? Junior or senior, Lee? Both? Okay, that was both. So. It's interesting, things that excite us. I, I would do lots of things to be able to see, see Queen live. Oh, and I'm stuck with watching YouTube, Okay. But there are certain things in our life that, that we'd say, yes, I would pay good money to go do that. The reality is I think people still desire to see and are drawn into the center of what is happening. I talked about with the kids. That people are still desire to see what Christ is doing or what God is doing through Christ. They're still drawn to Bethlehem. So I want to read you part of the, the Luke 2 Christmas story. We heard it if you were here Friday night. Uh, if you come, to one of the bypass, uh, you come to one of the Christmas Eve services uh, at River Street or Bypass, I guarantee you we'll read the whole thing. Okay? But I'm also going to use Mark today. And if you don't know much about Mark's gospel, that might be a little interesting to see how we're going to use Mark today. Luke chapter 2, starting with verse 8. He says, And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over the flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, and you will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those whom his favor rests. 
And when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. And it says the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. For all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. As soon as they heard the news, by the way, I don't remember which verse it is, it says that a heavenly host, I wonder how many that is. I always, uh, when I was pondering this, I, I don't know. I figured 15, 25 angels. I was reading something this week and he said, can you imagine that any angel wouldn't have come to announce the coming of the king? That the shepherds, when it says, do not be afraid, I can only imagine when you're sitting there with your little lamb, thanks Terry for getting them the shepherd, by the way. Because I, I, I was like, I gotta get shepherd out of these kids. <laughs> Can you imagine that there's five or six of you and all of a sudden on the hill that you are outside of Bethlehem and it is not just 25 but it's surrounded. There's something you've never seen before. I, I don't know what an angel looks like. I know that the ones described in Revelation and in Isaiah that they have, have wings, they have extra hands. I'm assuming I, for somehow I see something that is shiny it's giving off some type of light. And they're surrounded there by all of a sudden. And the Messiah, the King of Kings, God incarnate, is here. I can now understand when I was reading that for the first time, I'm like, don't be afraid. The Messiah is coming. It said in the very first of that, it says that I have good news. And it's not the headline in the local paper. It's not that somebody's getting married or that we're getting to get on the airplane. It's good news that will affect every person in this world. It will affect every person who claims to be a Christ follower. The good news, the Messiah is there. He is here. Hmm. What in the world had they be, were they thinking? Because it is interesting, at that moment they say, we're going to see. They are drawn to the place. Can you imagine when they're walking in, and I am so not used to having a jacket on, y'all, in this headset. I give up. Well, let's tug it. Yeah, let's go. Can you imagine the shepherds coming into town? And, it, and we don't see the wise men in the star. But somewhere they're drawn and they're going and looking from place to place. And they're sticking their head. By the way, it doesn't smell good. They're looking in every cave and everything that might look like a stable and they're going, no baby here. And all of a sudden, though, there's something driving them. And I don't know, I'm not, y'all know I'm ADD, I get distracted in a hurry. I might have been done after about four stables. It doesn't tell us how long they looked. Maybe they were lucky and it was the first one. Maybe because all the animals were shooed out and Mary and Joseph and the baby are there. I don't know. But I know that it says they came from outside of town and that they hauled their behinds as fast as they could into town looking to see what the angels had told them about. 
that the good news of Jesus Christ was here. God incarnate. I still think people are drawn to that. I think they're drawn to that more than I am drawn to, to hear foreigners sing one last time. I think they are drawn. It is amazing to me when I get outside of America. Literally, I think about, where's my bride? I'm used to you being up here. Um, she said y'all had her seat. Okay. I think about her going to Cuba on a mission trip. And th this is before this, okay? This is before the connection. We had talked about and dreamed about and tried to plant and failed at planting a church. And she goes to a place for 10 days or how many of her days it was. I know it's wrong. Don't worry about it. And in the midst of it, she saw people with a hunger to hear about Jesus. And she saw... Somebody come to know Christ on like the second day they were there and a church planted in this individual's home by the end of the week. And we both thought this might be our church planting experience. It was amazing because to hear those stories of people being drawn to the good news of Jesus Christ. And see, I, I'm afraid we don't have that same bit of hunger in our own world sometimes. But it's amazing to me that when I get down into conversations of how much people are still looking for it. They are still drawn to what Christ is doing, what God is doing through the gospel. Because see, the very first part of that, I've got to have these glasses out of this jacket I got rid of, y'all. The very first part, the reason I started back at verse 8, because it's not about the baby coming, that it is the good news. It says, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. And then he tells them not to be afraid. Oh, he tells them that this is about good news. He tells them that this is about the Christ coming. You say, how does that match up with Mark? The reason that we can do, we can do Matthew and we have the lineage of Jesus. We can do, we use Luke every Christmas. Challenge is, what are we going to say? Something different. And we don't. We can use John, and I've quoted part of John over and over to y'all about the word and the light for the last couple of weeks. Mark's gospel never mentions the birth of Christ. Mark chapter 1, 1 through 3 says in the beginning the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. He quotes Isaiah and he goes on to say, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness Prepare the way of the Lord and make straight the paths for him. Tells us the good news is coming and we're going to send for us John the Baptist. We know exactly who it is. We see him as we start in verse 4. And then in verse 14, I think it, isn't it Matt? It says, after John was put into prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. And Mark says, yes, it is vital that we have God incarnate, that we have Emmanuel, God, with us. He says, but the whole piece of that is that we know the good news. Hmm. People are still drawn to it because I don't think any of us, most non-believers in this world, 
Not even most Christians are going to go get on a plane and go to Bethlehem looking for Jesus, are they? The reality, Jesus is around a fire pit on Friday night. Jesus in Bethlehem is at Walmart today, this afternoon. Oh, that wretched place. That's a hard place to, to have Jesus right now. Or TJ Maxx yesterday, right, Crystal? Yeah, amen, yeah. I was there with you. I was trying to stand in line for her to check me out, and there was no hope. It did, I don't know what was happening, but it didn't look good. Hmm. See, the, by the way, the go tell them on the mountain is perfect. Because the reality is, of that concept of go tell it on the mountain, is to go live it on your street. To go live it where you go. Because in the midst of that, all of a sudden the good news bill becomes real to everyone we meet. Mm. Because there may not be a manger and an immaculate conception. But there is Bethlehem everywhere you go. Because there is good news everywhere you go. Hmm. Have you ever thought of yourself as being Bethlehem? Of being the place where somebody might come and see Jesus for the very first time. And in our ups and downs, I think that's challenging sometimes. And sometimes you have conversations that take, and things that take a long time to come to fruition. But yet in the midst of all of that, the good news is still carried out. Hmm. How will you look like the angel announcing that the good news has come if you have any shopping left to do? Hmm. Will you elbow them out of the way for the last super toy or the perfect gift for our mom and dad who I still have to shop for? Or am I willing to give somebody a little extra grace so that they might see that the Christ has come and it has changed who we are? See, because the thing about the good news is that we are never the same after the good news gets a hold of us. It does something to us. Hmm. What is the good news doing to you on the inside? And how are you Bethlehem to somebody else? Because it's, it's a time and a place where we become a people where others see Christ not just right now. But they can see Christ on January the 5th. They can see Christ on April the 30th. February the 29th. Is that this coming year? We leave in here? Yeah. On July 1st, July 4th, or whatever day you want to pick out of the 365. Because when we become a people where they can see Christ all the time, then they'll be drawn to the good news. They'll be drawn to what he's doing in us. The thing that I'm always amazed at is that when our love prevails, or his love prevails, people are drawn to it. It never fails. That people are drawn to how we forgive, how we love, how we move forward, or how we love them when they don't think we should. And it happens quite frequently. People look at you and go, why'd you do that? Hmm. Because I have something inside of me that's changed me into who I am. How will you be Bethlehem this year? How will you be the place where somebody is drawn to see Christ? It's amazing. I look around this room, and I, I know where you will go, or at least for many of you. I know some of the circles you will move in. God knows exactly the circles you will move in. But how will you be a person that is loving somebody enough so that they might see Christ? Because it's a time that that 
that we are that type of person, that we are telling it not on the mountain, but on the street that we walk, the street that we live, the place that we go. Hmm. Because that, the gospel, the good news, is something worth sharing. It's something worth carrying everywhere we go. Let me pray for you, and then, uh, then the band's going to come and lead us as we, as we collect our offerings, our connection cards. Uh, and then we've got a little something for you at the end, too. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for a chance to be here. Father, thank you for a chance for us to come and worship. God, it's no surprise that you came. It's, it's that you loved us enough. And Lord, may we carry that love wherever we go. And may others see what you are doing in us. Amen.